But of course, let's uh, get on with the uh, debt market. The Buhari's administration seems to have found a way to start reducing the cost at which it's borrowing locally. This looks a bit of a lot of financial engineering, and everybody who is on the market, in the market, in the money, knows what is going on. I have an idea that the government has found a way to start reducing the cost of borrowing, but the government is still very big in the market, as the, anyone here will tell you. Would you, uh, Obiani Jun Sofor is from Afrinverse, is one of the uh, research analysts live here in the studios to take us through this uh, debt market. Good morning. Good morning, Boston. This is, uh, looks like something is happening, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it's happening. How is this Bu ah, Buhari, is Buhari team uh, from the DMO to the Ministry of Finance to the Central Bank? It looks like this is the coalition yes. of those who are finding a way to reduce the cost of borrowing. How are they achieving this? Well, um, definitely, it's not news that the f um, federal government is currently embarking on a borrowing spree in order to fund the 2017 budget deficit of about 2.4 trillion naira. I mean, looking at the breakdown, um, the um, government plans to borrow about 1.2 trillion naira domestically and about 1.1 trillion naira. Um, from external sources. As of 2017, we are yet to explore any opportunities for external sources. Um, early this year, we saw um, the federal government um, issue um, euro bonds, but this was largely for the 2016 budget as well as the diaspora bonds. So um, they are opting for a cheaper source of um, deficit. As of 2016, our um, cost of servicing was about 66%. So what the intention is to free up more capital in order to pursue viable projects which can, um, in, the, in the medium term, um, yield economic benefits to the, to the economy. So if we hear, uh, what are you saying right now, time to, 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 to spread it out on the table for everyone to see. What we're seeing right now in terms of the uh, fresh $5.5 .5 billion, which was uh, reported uh, by yeah. Bloomberg two days ago uh, by the DMO, yeah. is for 2017. for 2017. Budget that yeah. started in July. Yeah. yeah. May okay, technically, May, June. Yes, yes. Uh, I think about June when the budget yes. was signed. Uh, so that is a fresh round for 2017 yes. calendar that started about uh, four months ago. Yeah. And then since July, the debt office, the DMO has been doing a, a rapid month and month yeah. uh, um, uh, FGN, narrow bond, and what was done this week was massive. Yes. 234 billion, yes. almost 235 billion, yes. when the government was looking for 135 yes. billion, it was massively yes. oversubscribed. Then we have the Sukuk bond, yes. also oversubscribed, yes. 105.878 billion naira. Yes. Now, why are investors interested in lending this massively to the government, even though the rates are beginning to trend lower? Well, definitely, um, the federal government needs to fund, needs to fund the um, 2017 budget, and as doing so, they need to offer attractive rates to investors in order to lure them to give them their funds. So, as such, you, and you, you see rates in the domestic space as high as 16 percent, 17 percent, thereabouts. However, for the um, um, when you look at the external sector, we are um, looking at um, yields in. Um, for example, in the U.S., um, you see yields for 10-year bonds at 2.4 percent. There are about the benchmark rate at U.S. is about 1 percent to 1.25 percent. It's probably the highest when you look at the major central banks across the world. So the federal government is trying to take advantage of this, rather than um, offer the domestic, rather, rather than source for funds from the domestic space at this high um, interest rates. They are actually opting for um, external sources of borrowing in order to lower the cost of servicing. So as such, um, in investors have this perception that um, interest rates is going to um, sort of moderate in the medium term and as such keen into longer dated um, instruments. So um, the, over, uh, the demand is sort of outweighing the supply and hence a moderation in, in the rates. That was the question why, how, why investors are locking into the long end of the market rather than the short end. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely because there's this perception that um, rates in the, in, the, in the medium to long term is actually going to reduce. That's the central bank is yeah. likely going to yeah. uh, do something. Yeah, you see in the last three weeks, um, the CBN has stopped issuing longer dated OMO 
instruments. That's um, the open market operation, yeah, Treasury open, bill. Yes, yes. The, so they have stopped. So um, investors have sort of seen this. And if you look at the Treasury bills market for the last um, three weeks or thereabout, you've seen that um, investors' participation has largely been due to the 364 day instruments um, as. As such, there's this perception that um, in the medium term, rates are actually going to moderate. Uh, but but um, either ways, the rates at which we're looking at are still in the double-digit region, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's still quite high. That's why, um, as of now, the federal government is trying to alter the debt mix. If you look, in our, if you look at our debt profile, about over 76 percent thereabout is largely skewed to domestic debt while um, about 20%, 21% is largely skewed to external debt. And these external debt are more bilateral and multilateral in nature, which we're giving at a concessionary rate. So as such, we, we are yet to e explore our capacity as regards to external debt. So that's why the federal government is currently embarking on that um, borrowing spree for the external sector. The, 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 the cost of debt is still high, but even if the, the, the cost, what is the yield on it, when everything starts going down, uh, do you see any time soon when we could see a uh, coupon at 9%, for example? Um, as regards to the external <laughs> bonds we plan to... <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, locally. For locally yes. Well, um, that's, that's still a long shot. That's, that's, still a, that's still a long shot. Our benchmark rate is currently at 14%. I mean... Omo yields are currently at 17% um, thereabouts, so it's, more, it's unlikely that um, any time soon we would see them get to as low as 9%. So what would you uh, folks be telling investors uh, who are uh, looking at, well, it's been a very sweet time. They've had 20%, they had 19%, they had 18%. Now we're, we're gradually creeping to 17 and 16 yeah. percent, and rates uh, on the streets is gradually uh, narrowing to the NPR. Yeah, well, definitely, um, investors for now they have two ends of the market to play at, um, as opposed to last year where it was only the fixed income market that was relatively safe. As of now, the equities market has been doing well. You can see by PMI readings, I mean, companies' performances have actually improved. As such, investors can actually take advantage of um, stocks that have been beaten down for the last couple of months or thereabout and actually play in that sector or continue even at 17 percent in for um, short-term instruments over and two bills is still quite um, an, a, an attractive rate so investors have the option of actually playing in the equities market or in the fixed income markets uh, we, 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 the, I'm not sure if you agree but almost everyone on the street thinks that the government is over borrowing well um, the the question has to go back to why are they borrowing? I mean, we fell short of our target, um, our revenue target in 2016, about 18 percent short, and as such, the government has to embark on a borrowing spree in order to fund the, the 2016 and 2017 budget. So as of now, our debt to GDP ratio is quite low, so you cannot actually say that um, they've actually breached any, any gap or not. And if you look at our debt structure, it's majorly skewed towards domestic borrowing. In the event of any crisis thereabout, they can actually print up more money. Worst case scenario, to pay up this, this debt. Our foreign debt, we are yet to explore um, opportunities there. So for, for now, it's, it, it, it's quite safe to say that the federal government is actually on, on the right course. Still on, still on track. Yeah. Uh, but but as, as yields begin to, to go down, yeah. uh, for those of you who have mutual funds yeah. and you've uh, locked in monies into uh, these uh, uh, treasuries and bonds, uh, hoping that the good days will remain good. Now it looks like the government is uh, 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 dragging you, uh, fund managers and uh, PFAs, for example, insurance companies who are a little bit heavy, including banks, uh, holding these uh, um, uh, bonds into uh, what you call this cost-saving uh, 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 room, as it were. Uh, do you think it will have any major uh, impact on, on, on this uh, uh, mutual funds and other assets that are tied to these bonds and treasuries as the yield on them begin to, uh, to lower? Well, definitely. What's, what's this... Um players in this end of the market are looking for a return. So um, this is going to translate into a, re a reduction in their returns. But there about, we need to look about, we need to look at the bigger picture. I mean, we are currently in um, 
we, we need to get ourselves out of our current predicament. And as such, the federal government has set um, us on the right course in order to um, pursue an exp expansionary budget, in order to take us out of our current predicament. So looking at the, at the bigger picture as such. Yeah, but again, if, I, if I'm the one that has money there, I'm going to be a little bit worried. Uh, because if I had planned for 20% for 2017, here we are in September, ending uh, into, into October, and I see my rates coming to 16% or 17%. And when I thought that initially, I'm really, really way ahead of inflation. At, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, this is where rates are. Uh, this is not, it's not going to, uh, I'm going to look at the government again and say, hey, I'm not too sure I like this, how, the way this, this are going. Well, but in, in, the, in view of this, do you think uh, uh, investors, portfolio uh, uh, investors and others will begin to um, reweigh their uh, assets um, uh, mix in terms of whether they should go a little bit more into stocks? Uh, where there's a bit of a liquidity, even though bonds and treasuries look uh, is a lot more safer? Well, um, it's most unlikely because for um, equities and fixed income, they have a threshold in which they can actually invest in the equities market. So as such, they're going to play as long as they don't breach that regulatory threshold or, or thereabouts. For the fixed income market, um, We've just seen about a 1% or 110 percent basis point decrease in yield. It's not that significant for um, it to, um, to sort of significantly impact um, portfolio returns. So there about there's still opportunities in the fixed income market. We've seen, as of recent times, investors are actually keen, um, keen into longer term instruments, the 2037 bond in, in instruments and there about. So there are still opportunities in both sides of the market for them to explore. Maybe I just, maybe I just uh, rebalance, maybe I just uh, rebalance my portfolio a little bit. Uh, but again, doing business with the government is still good business. It's or lending business. money to government. It's, it's still relatively safe than um, actually opting for e equities or thereabout. You guys in the debt market are the ones making a kill these days. You don't have another fund. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just as everyone is getting out of, of, uh, of, of a contraction, you folks are still uh, smiling. Uh, that's, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for coming. Thank we you. appreciate that. Uh, Uju, i see you at the other side in the new month right, of uh, October from Afroinvestor Research Analysts.